Hello and welcome to Top Build TV episode seven. So in this episode, we have been busy as usual. Uh, we've got stuff coming up where we've been working for the founder of Poundland, Stephen Smith. Uh, we've got new stuff, lots of new jobs and new projects and things coming up ahead. We are busy here. So spray room and booth is looking very busy. So we've got jobs for the down London. We've got media wall. Back full in here again now you see. We've got understair storage over the back, more media walls. And then we've got Danny, our newest Hello. lad, um, who's here, spray painter, come with lots of experience. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looking forward to getting stuck into it, aren't you, Dan? Yeah, I'm, I'm well exhorted. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait. Happy and then, Monday, everyone. Happy Monday. And then downstairs then, we're looking busy as well. Oh, actually, in the back room through here, in our building room. Currently, I'll just show you what's going on around here this morning. So around here we have a wardrobe being built as we speak. Now with this one, we've got our Hawaii style doors, dressing table in the center, internal drawers. So everything's made and prepped for that. Everything's been sent through to Danny on that one. And then this afternoon now, or late morning, myself and Luke, we've prepped all the parts for this. So this one's gonna be a nice, nice looking one. So we've got a media wall to build. That's the style we're going for. That's the shape and the sizes we're going for. So that's what me and Luke have done. So we've prepped most of our parts for this now. So there's a lot of brain thinking in this one. And then downstairs. You understand storage now, that's ready. As you just stood upstairs, Danny's working his way through the painting on that. The mess here, the fire's been running all morning, that's gonna be running all day, so all our waste will be going through our fire. And Dave is busy at the back here. Yeah, so uh, all the drawings and everything's been sorted for the media wall. It's quite a complex design, but we've gone through it with the lads and uh, they're all sorted for today. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, quite a lot to catch up in over the weekend. So uh, we've had quite a lot of new inquiries and uh, new prices to get out, but yeah, it's gonna be a busy one, but it should be good. So Sunday afternoon, and me and my beautiful boys, we've come for a drink. We're going to see family, haven't we? Yep, sure. Yeah, and Ollie's had a good week at school. Yeah, it's been good, apart from all of the homework. <laughs> yeah, um, loads of homework, but luckily he's so clever and brainy, so he just finds it easy. But yeah, we're gonna have a nice day. We're gonna go and see our family, haven't we? You've seen your cousins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, nice chilled day. So it's now Sunday night and it's half seven and I've just had to drive up to Coventry uh, basically to meet the Lamello rep and you've got to say fair play to him, he's met me in his own time because we've misplaced our jig for one of the fixings that we need uh, to be using basically tomorrow and the next day. So he's lent me his out of his own toolkit and you know that's why I like dealing with great companies because you know like he's gone out of his way tonight now. Um, to sort me that out, he really didn't have to, but I dropped him a text over the weekend and he said, mate, just fly up. So, no, hats off to him, really appreciate that. So yeah, that's uh, that's our plan for tomorrow because we've got some bespoke units to make. Well, I've got some a bespoke massive media wall that's starting, we've already started it Friday, but we're gonna be starting to put it together tomorrow. Um, but I've also got some units that we're making alongside ben Benchmark kitchens basically great company to deal with um yeah so we're just helping them out on a kitchen just making um some bespoke units that a customer's requested so i said i'll try and get them made for them by by wednesday just as a bit of a favor kind of thing back so yeah so that's the plan for tomorrow so i'm um, gonna get home now and finally put my feet up so this morning we have made these kitchen units. These are for a customer who are having a benchmark kitchen fitted. Now benchmark, obviously stock, uh, lovely kitchen units and what have you. But with these, benchmark rang us and said, the customer wants a couple of bespoke size units making, can we make them to match which we could? So we've made them and the way we've made these units, we've used a lamello fixing called the Cabineo, which is a brilliant uh, little fixing. So basically how it works is we CNC into there, that taps in with a mallet, and then you get a cover plate, and you do get them in different colours. You can get them in different colours, but they're hidden anyway, so you can't see them. Um, and then they basically, we do them sunk in, but you can also have them flush mount. 
but it has a little cap. The little cap is 0.7 mil. So yeah, that goes on there. So these are now ready for collection. That's um, another one out of the way. So this afternoon now, I'm gonna be jumping back onto the media wall upstairs. Luke's carrying on with that as we speak now. Dave's in the CAD, Danny's on the spray booth. So everything is going to plan, but busy as usual. So we're midpoint now on the large feature wall. Everything's going to plan. There's just so much work involved on the finishing parts. So me and Luke now, we're putting all the lights in here. This afternoon, if you come a bit closer, I'll show you over here. This afternoon, we're going to be cutting all the mirrors for all the sections. Then we've got all our face fronts to go on, all the different trims, and then we've got to fix it all together. But because this ceiling isn't tall enough for this, we're having to make it for two sections. And then obviously we've got to think about how we're fixing. And for this, we are using a few different types of lamello fixing, as we do, because they're great fixings to use. So yeah, we've got our work put out on this. Danny's out in the spray room, cracking through some new doors, uh, which I'll show you actually, a new door design that we've got coming through. Dave's downstairs. Murphy's going to plan through here. These are going through top coats for down London. Danny's currently working on Parts there. We have new door designs here, which looks stunning. So they're running through the booth. Top goes going on. So yeah, all going to plan out here. Looking, looking great. We're back in the office chair. Me and Dave have got a lot to try and catch up now on some quotes and emails. So, as well as the CAD work, as usual. But yeah, so today I've had a chat with Ryan, the apprentice that you've seen before, and this is the exact reason why we do do like a month of trial, because we are very bespoke, and it's not like, like for me, for instance, when I did my apprenticeship, I was on a new build site. It was like side carpentry, like kind of house bashing. It's a lot different to coming in a bespoke workshop because it's not like we can say to Ryan, here's an expensive piece of wood, have fun, you know. So it is a lot of like visual watching at the start, mixed in with a lot of labouring because obviously you know you can't just stand watching all day so you have to keep busy with the bits of labouring in between so obviously I had a good chat with Ryan now at the end and for him and for us it wasn't working out so we've shook hands and I've pointed him in the right direction and my advice on going to get some side carpentry to try and get his carpentry skills his basic carpentry skills up there so yeah wish Ryan all the best absolutely lovely lad and like I say we, we nothing's we haven't fell out nothing's any on bad terms but it just hasn't worked out so yeah we're going to get back into the emails now we're going to carry on um, getting all the quotes out and busy afternoon ahead six o'clock Wednesday morning little man has had his breakfast and as he does on a Wednesday, he's going over to his nan's for the day, yeah. Yeah, going to your nan's. So I'm going to drop him up there and then head to the workshop, try and get there for eight o'clock. So late Wednesday night and me and Luke are adapting the ducting, which I showed you in the other episode. So me and Luke are cracking on, got all the ducting cut down here, making it on the floor. And we're basically just improving what was there, so getting a better run with a thicker pipe over the back there coming straight over so then all the machines over on this side will have better ducting and obviously the only time we can do this really is night time because in the daytime all the machines are running so best time to just do it now after work so the booth is looking great Danny's doing a great job so we've got all these now they've got to be stuck in our patterns they've got to be fixed in ready for London hoping to get to London at the end of this week if not the start of next week because we've got carpet going down so we've got to get there before that um, but yeah everything's going to plan so come and have a look Danny's doing a great job to be honest with you so he's currently working on some doors how you found your first week with us Danny? Amazing loved every minute of it yeah it's, uh... yeah you're doing an absolute bang on job it's good to Thanks. have the organisation as well like is he, Danny said to me he's enjoyed coming in and like getting it how he wanted, he said at the start, do you mind if I change this around and organise that, didn't you? Clean job is a happy job. Like yeah. I told you, clean job is a happy job. Yeah. No, and it is, it's work, it. working great. And like, uh, obviously fitting in with the team, that's a big thing with us, because when someone new comes in, obviously Danny's got the band, so we all have a laugh, yeah. don't we? I feel like I've been here 
forever. Does yeah. Makes sense. It's only been six days, but yeah. It's so nah, and he's fitted in straight away. Like that is brilliant. It's like literally like feels like he's been here for ages. And it's took so much pressure off me because as you see in all the other episodes, I'm there doing all the night shifts and trying to keep up with being so busy downstairs. So obviously this is like a, the missing wheel in the tracks. And Danny's obviously come in and he just fits in great to be honest with you. His finish is brilliant. So yeah, it's all going to plan. It's going amazing. Going now Danny's top builder for life now, part of the family. So Monday afternoon, van is loaded, my van's loaded, Luke's van loaded. So tomorrow we're going to fit this stunning uh, feature wall and it's actually for Stephen Smith, who is a very inspirational bloke. He's the man who set up Poundland from scratch. Really, really inspirational story. And now obviously he's done really well for himself, very successful in loads of businesses. So amazing opportunity to go and work for him, really nice guy. So van's all loaded now. We've got, just going to check round, check all our tools are on the van, last few bits, and then in the morning, me and Luke are going to fly up to this fit. Dave is going to be in with Danny here, because we've got spray painting, and we've got stuff that Dave needs to cut out. So it's just going to be me and Luke to start, and then a few of the other lads to fly up as some meters up there. Tuesday morning, 10 past seven, en route up to fit Stephen Smith's, the large, beautiful feature wall that we've got. So yeah, going to be a busy day for me and Luke. We have done the bulk of the work in the workshop, but because it was so high, we couldn't build it up fully in the workshop. So we have got to make the last parts of the fixing together at the fit, which isn't a problem. Obviously when we're using fixings like Lamello, which most of this has been built from, um, just great fixings to be honest with you, because we've made it up all in the workshop. <coughs> For this one we've used the Tenzo P14s which are like snap together fixings in the workshop. Then we can snap them back out. We have brought the Zeta with us, we carry that all the time anyway in case we need a couple of extra fixings put in. But yeah, Lamello fixings are great for the type of work that we do because we can make things like this up in the workshop without putting loads of screw holes in it. And then obviously fit it together back on site with a seamless look. So yeah, really, really looking forward to seeing how this one looks when it's all fully up. I've got, we have got our work out there. I've wired most of the lighting up, but I've still got to wire some of that there as well, just because I couldn't do all the top part. So I've still got my work cut out. But yeah, talking of Lamello, so that's all confirmed as well. We, we are going out to um, Switzerland in June. So all that's sorted. And there is going to be a few people there actually in the woodwork world. Uh, that you might know of and some other great fitters. Um, Alistair Johnson, Freebird Interiors. So if you haven't seen who he is, definitely go over and check his, his page out, his YouTube channel and his social medias, Freebird Interiors. Does some great work, does some great content to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I spoke to him on Friday. We had a, like a good two hour chat about business and business that we might be doing a few bits together coming forward to be honest with you so yeah i've been meaning to kind of speak to him anyway and he said the same with me he have been meaning to reach out so obviously we had a good old chat and it's nice to speak to someone as well to be honest with you we do speak to a lot of business owners but someone who's got similar machinery to us got similar outlooks to us similar business model really and uh just got the same kind of goals you know so uh, it's interesting to chat with someone who's on the same page as us really and trying to do the exact same type of work as what we're doing on a daily basis. Like obviously anyone who's doing that understands like struggles and the pressures that are actually involved behind the scenes. But yeah, I'm, I'm always up for learning and if there's a new tool out or a new skill that I can learn, like, I am definitely first in line to have a look at it because I think if you can improve your day of any kind and make the system better and get a neater fixing or a neater fit or a neater way of cutting something, then I think it's just the way forward. It's like me and Alistair now, like Alistair set up a WhatsApp group and there's me and another lad, Chris, in there currently. Um, yeah, we're like kind of sharing information and stuff on bits that we're, we're doing between each other which obviously you know all helps each other in the same process and the 
same game. But yeah, back onto today's fit then. We've got a real busy one because it's like me and Luke just starting off. Obviously, I will be looking for a new apprentice soon, but obviously they will be there kind of loading out. On today's situation, they would be loading out, helping us click together the pre-cut stuff, stuff. But obviously, um, then we have to train them up to get to the point where they can actually use the ZTP2 and get all the fixings in the right place. Um, you know, and just, it's like the schoolboy errors that you make, I've made, every single person makes, there's nothing like wrong with it, but unfortunately when you're learning something, a new skill, you do make them rookie errors, and obviously when you're using like expensive stuff and you're making little, real intricate stuff that you can't just quickly replace, like unless you're in the workshop and you've got plenty of spare material and there's money to lose on the job, which nine times ten is not, then obviously you know you can't put risk factor into it so I think we've lost we our team that we get now even if we take on like carpenters now you know it's getting to know that they're able to do or even showing them to be honest with you that the machines that we use and how we do it because obviously every company you go to is different unless you're going on new build sites or whatever and there's a different process everyone makes things slightly slightly different you know so obviously we try and make things like Luke works alongside me absolutely brilliant because Luke done his apprenticeship with me like just probably 10 years ago now uh, with my last company so obviously Luke's been with me from scratch and obviously the last company we did have a massive large team of carpenters and I wasn't as such Luke wasn't under, under me on the tools, he was under our fitters and bits and bobs, but he was around me every day and in and out, but obviously we had that many projects running with my old company. It wasn't like I was placed at one spot every day, I was on a new build to new build to different sites, back to our old offices and stuff, so obviously Luke spent a lot of time with other carpenters, but all got the, mind, the same mindset, and then obviously when Luke's come with me now to top build, obviously like, six years ago, whenever they come back to me or come, come over with me. And obviously, uh, he just thinks the exact same. So, like, we, we actually get on me and Luke, like, we've become good friends. So he started as an apprenticeship for me. And now he's actually, like, become a good friend. And we have a laugh through the day. We think the same. So if Luke's working on the left, I'm working on the right, we can guarantee that when we get to the centre or whatever, it's going to be made the same left to right in terms of the way it's all fixed together. You know, so obviously it's me who goes out and kind of sees the customers. Taking Dave with me now. Dave obviously does the design, the CAD work, but obviously yeah, it's me who will deep down discuss with the customer exactly what they want to get that exact finish, that exact method of fix, and that exact kind of style basically. So. It's me who do all that, so obviously then when we come to like a large fit like today, obviously, although it's been made in the workshop, the little small details that I'm the only one who probably would have spoke with the customer about and understands that part, then obviously I have to kind of set the rules on, on what's going on, but the thing with like running a business, when you have got the right team, because I've been there many times when I haven't got the right team, especially with like the old company, you know, and when you've got the wrong team players in, like the day-to-day -day stuff becomes harder, you know, but basically when you're running a business like we are, I see it as like you're kind of like the captain of the ship. You've invested a lot of time, a lot of money. Find a team that you can actually get on with and like everyone at Top Build now, we actually do get on very well. Outside of work, if we was to stand there talking in the pub, we'd get on really well. But also got the same mindsets on Let's create the best finish possible. Let's try this method. Let's have a look at this method. Let's try that out. It's all that kind of mindset, but enjoying it all the same as we're building things that, you know, are out of the ordinary and different and look bespoke and stunning. So that's what we're all about. <coughs> and I think that's what it is finding the team players that are on that team where you can like let them crack on with their roles and you just kind of guide them from the start like for instance with this job now so obviously i've just discussed everything with steve i've got the design then through with dave who's obviously amazing with his cad work and his design dave you know that's his game so dave's come up with the 
design and the CAD work, put everything into paper then. So obviously like Luke then, when we're building it in the workshop, me and Luke, he can actually get a complete visual for what I have spoken with Steve. So obviously then we can get it all together and then obviously put our thoughts all together. You know, even probably on this job, it happens on most jobs, we'll start off thinking with a bit of a plan how we're gonna make something. And then as we start to cut it and make it, it could be anyone, one thing will pop into someone's head and go, do you know, why, why don't we use this fixing or why don't we fix that on that side? And it could slightly change there and then. And obviously between us all as a team, and that's what we are at Top Build, there's no one saying, no, 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 it's that way. It's a teamwork. And then between us all, we'll discuss it again and then change it if it needs to, if it's gonna make the fit better and a nicer process. So yeah, me and Luke today, We'll have heart 80s on the radio because we love a bit of 80s and get the job cracking and we'll come back and show you when it's cracking on. So I've just come into Stephen Smith's house now. Absolute stunning, stunning land, stunning garden. Yeah, so me and Luke now we're gonna get our work on, get stuck in. Yes, fit sorted. And that is a wrap on the feature wall. So it's really come out to plan. It looks amazing. It's fitted in a treat. You can see why we couldn't get it in, in the workshop. So yeah, it's been a couple of hard days. It took me and Luke two days. We've just done it on our own in the end. Got it finished and it looks really nice. So with this, we've made it, all the oaks made from Finzer's Lycia Oak. All the white boxes are made from Xylocleaf. All the frontals, we've had to make an edge band of 36 mil because we've bonded everything that's together to fix. And everything that we've fixed together on this one, we've used Lamello's P14, the Tenzo clips. Absolutely amazing. So there's no fixings on show. Everything is fixed in and secured permanently, apart from plinths and top filler, where we've left a cable behind because you may want to plug in the future, but we've still put the Tenzos on so they can pop off the way we've created it. So yeah, everything's gone in and fitted like a treat. We've just got the tools on the van now. So we're just gonna have a little final tidy up in here and uh, get the tools back on. And I've just spoke to Steve now, he's really happy. Um, I've got to come back up because he's not in at the moment and we've got some more areas to measure around the house and actually some more of this to add on. So yeah, all good, gonna get the van loaded now and head home. So that's it for episode seven. Thanks for watching. We're currently now going to load the vans. We're going to be getting this understair storage fitted up in Solly Earl. So do come back next week. Have a look. We'll show you the footage of how that's going. Um, yeah, do subscribe. If you want to see any of our work and you want to see any of the upcoming projects that we're doing in between the week and more detailed areas of the project, do head over to Instagram at Top Bill Carpentry. Thanks for watching.